everybody, welcome back to Simple C10. And on today's episode, we're gonna install the Alex V Watts link in the back of Francis. So some people have been asking, why did I move away from the KP Components Watts link? And it's not necessarily that I moved away, I just wanted to try something different. We welded in the VeloWorks notch in the back and now I wanna weld in this Alex V Watts link. One of the main reasons I'm trying the Alex V Watts link this time is I like the design, but also the price point. You're sitting at around $300 compared to 500 plus shipping with the KP Components Watts link. Also the KP Components Watts link was really created to go with the KP step notch. So if you're not running the step notch, then you have to do some fabrication and it's not gonna bolt right in. And that kind of defeats the purpose of a bolt in Watts link if you're gonna have to weld it or fabricate it anyway. So the Alex V Watts link seems to be really simple. There's a couple brackets that you weld in and then you cut some universal brackets to make sure everything lines up and then you just weld all those in. So, hey, if you're not that great at welding, I'm not either. So on today's episode, we're gonna get through it. We're gonna install this Watts link on the back of this truck. So this Alex V Watts link is gonna come with all the hardware you need, the different brackets that weld into the side of the frame. If you get this upgraded, Heim joint setup, then you're gonna get these little spacers that go on there, all the bracketry that you need, the little rubber pieces that go in to the actual Watts link so everything runs smooth. Okay, I'm gonna run through kind of how this works. So this bracket is gonna mount to the back of your rear end. These little tabs are gonna weld into your rear end and it's gonna bolt on. So what I'll do is go ahead and bolt these tabs on there and then I'll line everything up and tack these on with the whole thing kind of bolted together so I know the thickness to space these out right here. So once this is bolted on to the rear end, then these little tabs are gonna go on here like this. And this is where these bolt on, just like that in the middle. So what it's doing, it's kind of like having two pan hard bars. When one works one way, it pushes the other the other way and it keeps your rear end centered at all times. So once we get it installed and I can move around the parts, I'll show you exactly kind of how it works. But I wanted you to understand the different parts that comes with it to give you the confidence that, hey, if I buy this kit, this is everything that I'm gonna need to make sure it works. So the first thing we wanna do is air up this rear end to about where ride height is gonna be. So the bag from the top of the bag bracket to the bottom of the bag bracket is five inches. So the next step is finding out where the center is so we can mount these brackets on the back of the rear end here. So I've just kinda got this mocked up just sitting on top of the rear end. You can see that I bolted in these little tabs, because the tabs are what we're gonna be welding into the back of the rear end right here. And then this bracket slides in and bolts to it. I'd rather get this whole thing bolted together and then line it up, get it tacked in where we need to go, and then we'll know everything bolts up perfectly. So if you're running a 12 bolt rear end, we actually have it a little bit easier than somebody that has an offset rear end, because the measurement from the U-bolt to where the rear end starts on both sides is 11 and a quarter. So we know this is perfectly center. Everything's perfectly center. So I set this up here and I measured and I split the difference. So I ended up with one and three quarter from the inside to inside, one and three quarter from inside to inside. So I know one and three quarter is how far I need to go out, and that'll be the inside of the bracket. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a level on the bottom of this, use that level to help us find the center of this rear end, and this rear end's a three inch rear end. So we're gonna measure, level, go up, one and a half would be perfectly center of this rear end, and then we're gonna add another half of an inch to make up for the bracket and that mark will be the top of the bracket. Just to explain a little bit more in case you didn't understand, to split the difference in this, this was how far left and right we need to go like this. And then we put the level on the bottom of this to measure an inch and a half up. And then from there, we added another half of an inch 
to account for how much this needs to go to put this at the top. About right there, which actually looks really, really good, centered. So whenever we get ready, we can tack in this top bracket right there. Preferably, if I had a second pair of hands, Zach, where are you at? I could hold this up with some gloves on and he could just tack in the whole thing exactly how it is. As you can see, I kind of got this rigged up a little bit to hold it for me. Um, this is the best that I could do with this long clamp, kind of at an angle. I've got two magnets holding the side in. Now it's barely in there, but if I can get that top tacked in, um, that'll work. Uh, right now, since I don't have an extra set of hands, I'm going to try to get it tacked in just how we have it here. I'm going to put a level on it, make sure everything is level. The angle of it looks really good from the side. I put the side pieces on here. The top bracket's gonna be about right here, level, so that's great. All right, you can see, went ahead and just tacked this in in two places on the top. It already feels really solid, but before I go ahead and weld this thing all the way in, I'm gonna go and grind down the bottom here and go ahead and tack in the bottom. And then we've got this whole thing kind of tacked up where it needs to go. Then I can go ahead and mount the side piece and we can get the side pieces tacked in where they need to go and kind of have the overall structure of this thing where we need it and then we can come back and weld everything in really good. So we've got this tacked down on top and bottom and it feels really good. Before we weld it in all the way, what I want to do is go ahead and put in this middle section right here with this and put on our side brackets temporarily and get the side braces bolted in and welded in kind of where they go tacked in. I want the whole thing tacked in where it needs to go before we really weld the whole thing in. I went ahead and put these rubber bushings in here and then put in the metal bushing that goes in the middle and now I'm gonna put on these two brackets on both sides. So I just kinda of got this hand tied in here to give you an idea. Those bars are gonna to connect to the middle of this. Those spacers will go in between and then those link bars will go, one will go over here and mount in and then the other will go below the frame and mount in. So when you go up, it's going to move the bars up. When you go down, it's gonna move them down. We're at ride height right now, so what I wanna do is have those bars level straight across on the top and on the bottom. And that's, that's gonna allow us, when we go down, the bars will be uneven, and then when we hit ride height, they're gonna be even. So when you go up and down, what it's gonna do is it's gonna push one way or the other, but keep the rear end centered. That's kind of how a Watts link works, is when you go up, if the pan hard bar pulls this way, then it's gonna push the other side the other way. So no matter where it's at, that rear end is gonna stay centered. With a pan hard bar mount, if you had the, the bar mounted over here into the rear end, at ride height, you could have it perfect, but if you go all the way up, that rear end might kick over a half of an inch. And then when you go down, it'll try to kick over because it has one pivot point that is pushing to try to keep that rear end centered. But with a Watts link, it keeps it centered because there's a bracket going to both sides of the frame that then keeps it centered. So that's kind of how it works. What I'm gonna do now is get those link bars 
go ahead and install those and then attach the little brackets that weld onto the frame just to kind of eyeball it. Let's see what we got, see what it's going to look like and make sure we're doing everything good. So here's the parts that we have left. We've got the two bars. We've got the driver's side mount that's going to go on the bottom of the frame. We can cut this to any length that we need to weld to the bottom of the frame. Then we have these brackets. These brackets are going to go on the side of the notch, the upper bracket. This is going to bolt in to the part that we just put on there, the same that goes here. So we're going to take a pair of these and they're going to go on both sides of this, just like that right there. We're going to go in and this is what's going to mount in between that bracket that we just put on. And then a bolt will go through here. So then there's flexibility. It's going up and down. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we got. Okay, so that's what we're wanting. What we're gonna do is we'll use that side bracket. I got it right here, actually. We'll cut this side bracket down. I'll measure from center of the eye to the actual notch itself, and then we'll cut this. Then we will get it level. We'll put a level on this bar right here, and then we will make a mark, and then we'll go ahead and tack this bracket into the notch. And this is gonna be on both sides to hold this like that. So I'm gonna make this bracket a little bit shorter than what we need because we have adjustment out. All right, so as you can see, we got this installed on here and got these installed. I started to mount up the bars, kind of where we wanna weld those in and everything at ride height. And then I started thinking, this bar might be kind of close when I air out to where these are. Uh-oh. So as you can see, this bar is gonna go directly on to where this bolt's on. So the first thing I thought is, Maybe I could move this bar up. Well, it's up about as far as you can go. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just cut this bar out. But I really like the double bar. I like the way that it looks and it makes it more structurally sound. So this is how cool it is to work with a small business. I sent Alex V a picture of what I had going on because this is the first truck that's had a monster notch in it like this, a step notch with this setup put in it that lays out. Um, Alex has had a lot of people on square bodies and some that have a mini notch install this on their truck. So with a mini notch, this bridge wouldn't be here. You know, the frame would be further up and it would work perfect. I've seen a lot of these on mini notch trucks and they work great. But on a monster notch, it needs to be a different kind of design. So what I did is I was thinking and I said, Alex, do you think you can make these seven inches instead of 10 inches? That would take an inch and a half off of the top and the bottom and just make it a shorter bracket so it won't hit this. And he said, dude, give me a day and I'll ship you out some. Well, that was just a couple days ago. And guess what just arrived from FedEx? New brackets to be able to install this on the truck. So thank you, Alex, for that. We're going to unwrap those right now, test fit them and then move on. So this is actually a good thing because if you're following along, you wanna do this Watts link, all you have to do is let Alex know that you're doing the simple C10 setup and he's gonna send you the shorter brackets here so they'll work on your truck. Another option would be you could get these 10 inch brackets and then not do a bridge on the back and it would work fine. But if you wanna do exactly what I'm doing right here, you can get the shorter brackets. So I've laid the brackets that I just showed you out to the side so we can compare them. Oh 
how sweet. He's got some new keychains. Those are awesome. C10 specific. Thank you for those. Sick. So normally the kit is going to come with these 10 inch brackets. And now I requested him to send me a seven, which is going to be about an inch and a half shorter on the top and bottom. That way that bar doesn't hit it. So this is what's really cool about working with a small business. You can reach out to the designer and the fabricator and Alex is all those things. He runs the business himself on the side and you can say, hey, this is the situation that I have. What can I do to fix it? And he comes up with a whole new design. Let's go ahead and install these shorter ones on the truck and start mocking up where the brackets are gonna go. Look at that. I can fit my hand under it. That's all the way deflated. So that is awesome. That's gonna work out great. This even looks, I like how it looks condensed down with the smaller brackets. I really love how this looks now. Um, I'm excited. All we have to do is we'll go ahead and mount those bars back to here and we will put this back up the ride height now that we know it's not gonna hit. And once we're at ride height, we want these two bars to weld into the notch now level. So when you're at ride height, you want both of these bars level. I've got this bracket right here level, straight up and down where we want it. I've got this at ride height. So everything needs to be level at the ride height right here. Okay, so I got this bar level, and this is just kind of close to where it's going to be because all we're measuring is from the notch to the eye, to the middle of the eye here. That bracket's going to be somewhere about like this. And what I'm looking for is make sure there's enough room in between the notch and this part. That way this part's not grinding against the notch to measure from the middle of this out we'll make a mark and we'll cut this bracket down on both brackets then we'll bolt the both of these brackets in here then we'll hold them up to the notch put the level back on it again and mark where these need to be welded in once we get them cut down both sides eye to eye are an inch and three quarter and we want to make that bracket a little bit shorter on both sides so we have some room to extend the poles and then we're not maxed out as soon as we start. So we're gonna make both side brackets an inch and a half long. These are the bars that come with the original kit. Remember that Alex V's kit is a universal kit. A lot of people use it on square bodies. Some have used it on mini notch trucks, but I believe this is the first 60s model truck with a step notch that it's been installed on. So what we're gonna do here, we need these to look exactly like these. You won't need this step down. The whole reason for this bracket the way that it is if you're on a mini notch, you're going to need this part sticking below the frame like that because the rear end is going to need a lot more space. But now since we have those shorter brackets, then this moves everything up to be on the side of the frame just like this. All I'm going to do is hold this up, make a mark, and we're going to cut and just use these tabs.
like that where they're tight and kind of you can move them together and that's perfect see how there's a quarter of an inch in between the frame and the bracket that's what we want because we can adjust these bars out see how i'm twisting them together and it's going to put pressure on that so now it's already in there it's got some pressure so by just tighten them up it pushes against and that's what we want now we can level up this bar make sure this is where we need inside to outside so it's straight here and then we can come in and mark where these need to go i'll grind down the paint on this so we can weld it and we'll be able to tack this in i'm going to go ahead and do this other side the same way and look at it get a good look at it get a one eye on it you know really make sure everything's uh, where it needs to be and then we will grind it down do this one more time mark it and i'm excited we're gonna have a watts link here in a minute this is what we're looking for right here so i don't have anything welded in yet all i did was get these brackets very close to where i want them to be and then i twist it out on them to add pressure and I did that to both sides to kind of get them in there tight and that gives me just enough pressure to put a level on it to move them up everywhere that I need it to make sure inside to outside that they're level kind of you can use this bar as a reference and these are right on where the bar is right on where the bar is and it's looking really good got this tacked in enough where I can test it now so ideally what you want we're sitting at ride height right now and what you want is you want these two bars to be pretty much even and this to be straight up and down like this as you can see this bar is slightly down just a little bit and I did that on purpose because when I had it straight out and tacked in whenever I aired the truck up to the full max capacity this bar was really close to this right here when it angled up so i needed to drop it down about another inch that way when i air the truck all the way up there's plenty of clearance in between here and i'll show you that right now So now that I have this all tacked in, I went ahead and measured to see where the center was and I adjusted these bars out back and forth to make sure at ride height that centered and all the way up and all the way down, the center stayed at 13 and three quarter right in the middle on both sides. And that's what's great about a Watts link. You go all the way up, all the way down, your rear end's always gonna be centered. Now what I'll do is unbolt all these pieces and then i'll weld in the rest of the brackets i need to weld in the bottom of this bracket anything that's just tacked in we'll go ahead and lock it in with welding it smooth it out paint the brackets that are on the rear end and everything paint these paint this bracket let it all dry assemble everything
Okay, I'm getting ready to install this middle section back together. And something that I talked to Alex about is, does this need greased? And he said he greases everything, even the bolts that go in just a little bit. That way there's not any squeaking. Because remember, these parts are going to be going up and down. They're going to be moving around all, uh, all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and use some grease. What I'm going to use is some high temp grease this is what i use for my disc brake so i'm just going to put a little of that on the bolts all over this section here and then if there's any excess that gets on the other stuff i'll just wipe it off but it's better to have all this stuff greased up so it doesn't squeak and it works properly and everything moves really nicely so that's what we're going to do here I'm going to put the bars on both sides, get those bolted in, then we'll connect them to the watt sling. And I'm going to be using the grease on all the different pieces that are going to connect together and move. So now that we have everything kind of bolted in, tightened where we need it to go, now we need to measure from frame to frame to the middle to make sure we've got it set in the middle. Because I've unscrewed the ends and painted these bars and screwed them all back together so I know we're not centered anymore. And I wanted to show you how you find center. So what I like to do is I'll measure frame to the center of the bolt. That's 13 and three quarter measure the other side 13 and three quarter so we're centered right here now i want to make sure the bars are straight up and down right here so i'm going to go ahead and screw those where they need to go because right now we're centered this is centered and left to right is centered another way that you can check you can measure from the inside lip of your wheel to the frame we're right at nine inches do the other side right at nine inches this is it i'll go ahead and get a wrench tighten these down to get those stuck and we've got a watts link i'll test it out i'll do the air up and down make sure everything looks good we'll air it all the way up and we'll check center and i'll put it all the way down check center and that's a watts link Thirteen and three quarter. Go to the frame. Thirteen and three quarter. Perfect. As you can see, this tilted, and that's what it's supposed to do because when you go all the way down, it is flexing to be able to go all the way down and still stay centered. At ride height, it's going to be perfectly up and down with the bars almost parallel but all the way down it's going to twist this way and it adjusts both ways and keeps that rear end perfectly center you can see the seven inch bar now we've got a hand width right here before the bridge so this is the perfect design thank you alex for getting that squared away let's go ahead and air it all the way up and see if we're at center now
Now you see this bracket tilted to the right to allow the length for this to go up, but also went this way to allow this going up and still kept it centered. Let's measure and make sure. 13 and three quarter. Thirteen and three quarter. How cool is that? Keeps this rear end perfectly centered, no matter the height, all the way up, all the way down, and everything straight at ride height. That is the main advantage to a Watts link: is you don't have to worry about if your rear end is in the right placement. And right there is where ride height is again, straight up and down. You've got your bars parallel. This one's not perfectly parallel because I had to drop this down another inch to clear this, but it's keeping everything center. It's gonna have nice ride to it. I'll add the shocks on there later on. That's the next step. I want to give another shout out to Alex V Metalworks. Thank you so much for sending this watch link for me to try out. Thank you for being quick to get the smaller bracket. That way I can make sure all the followers of Simple C10 have exactly what they need if they're following the builds that I do. So thank you for that. 